only watch the perfect match finale if you are in the mood for foolishness because this show is unserious from start to finish so if you're new to this channel welcome please like subscribe all that good stuff and if you're returning you know we get into a lot of things and the perfect match season two finale is just one of the many things we're going to get into so thank you for rocking with us and you know how we do so the finale of perfect match starts with the conclusion of the harry and jess fight if you don't remember what had happened it's basically harry was lying about what went down with melinda he already lied by omission because the night before he didn't say the comment about you know wanting to get her pregnant or see her pregnant but after i guess harry saw jess and melinda talking he then admitted to her that he did say something about you know her being pregnant so jess peeps game and she's smart enough not to match with him that night and they both leave alone for now but we'll talk about them more at the end of the show so the next day we see the remaining couples who do the last compatibility challenge of answering questions about one another and Tulu and Chris win. But Stevan and Alara were close. And they might have won if Alara remembered to ring her bell. And then um, Brian also nearly died on the bridge part of the challenge. And who knows how long they left him on that plank. But um, after the challenge, you know, the winners go on a date. So Tulu and Chris go on a date. And then they wreak havoc in the boardroom. So Tulu and Chris decide to bring back Nigel to go on a date with Christine, which is a little diabolical since Kaz and Christine were just fighting about um, her kissing Nigel. And he did seem a little jealous, but mostly still under Michael's spell because he kind of got with Christine because he was in his feelings about, you know, his fight with Michael, but he still, you know, liked Micah, at least wanted to see where their relationship could go and he's still thinking about it right and then um they also bring back jessica to go on a date with izzy who had a sympathy match with micah because her and cats fell out so really um they're trying to figure out if maybe Kaz and micah can get back together right so izzy and micah have a yoga date and he sweats everywhere, even all in her mouth. So she was grossed out. But Christine and Nigel did have a good date. So when they all get back to the house, you know, you're kind of wondering, okay, who's going to end up with who? But I kind of knew that Kaz and Mike was going to get back together. And, you know, they're all partying, showing off their hidden talents. And Tulu does some bone breaking and Chris does belly dancing and things like that. But the meat and potatoes of the night is that. Um, Micah and Kaz find out that, you know, they want each other back and stayed in front of Christine. She gets mad and tells Micah, you know, that her and Kaz had just been kissing. And then um, Christine, you know, gives it to Kaz and tries to kind of chew about a little bit. He's like, listen, we're not compatible. So Christine goes with Nigel. And you can tell she's still mad at Kaz. So it's clearly a rebound and everybody can see it. But the show is unserious, so they see it, but I guess they like seeing two black people together, so it is what it is. Brighton and Elise match again, Steven and Alara match again, but they do have a little fight about spin the bottle because um, I guess Alara thought that Stephen was a little too eager to go find a bottle and potentially kiss other people, but he assures her that he still likes her. Then uh, Tulu and Chris match again. Micah and Kaz make up and rematch. And then Jess and Izzy match. Kind of like a consolation prize match. And you know it wasn't real because literally before the sun even gets to finish setting. Sorry, before the sun gets to finish rising all the way. Um, just takes off to sign off their door and goes on to everybody. Yeah, we not. We unmatch and I'm leaving. And so, um, they all have little fake dates, except for Stephen and Alar, which felt real. He got, like, a nice little tent that was air-conditioned, it was glamping, it was nice. 
So in my mind, I'm like, oh, they just going to win. I know Steph and Anala are going to win, right? But then when they bring out the past cast members, most of them were hating on all the couples, right? So when it comes to deliberations on Tulu and Chris, Dominique was the first to say negative things about them. And Tulu kind of received it because she said Dominique was her friend. So she knew Dominique was looking out for her. And I thought Xanthi was going to say something because Chris was trying to creep on her the most. But lo and behold, the person with the most to say after Dominique was randomly Trevor's little cheating self. And he added his two cents about how, you know, if... Chris and Tulu were really serious. They wouldn't be talking about possibly meeting up if they long distance. They would make it work. So Nick throws them a bone. He's like, nah, it was long distance. So I know people could make it work long distance. But you could tell people aren't featuring Tulu and Chris. Even though they were one of my favorite couples. But yes, Chris was a little unserious. So the next couple that gets the hate they deserve are Elise and Brighton. <laughs> and the surprising person that hated on them to me was Stefan because um I guess all of them think that Elise does like toxic people and Stefan points out yeah like you was all in for Harry and I think she was still reeling from you know the Harry breakup because the way Elise moved it was all about revenge it was all about you know to get back for Micah setting up Jess with Harry she basically took Brighton from Micah because Brighton and Micah were talking the most. I thought they were going to get together when, you know, Brighton had entered the house the second time. And at least she didn't like, she liked nothing but revenge and nobody but Harry for real. Next, uh, people are talking about Nigel and Christine. They're the newest couple. And again, Christine was clearly rebounding with him. She was cussing out Cass the night before. Definitely butthurt over him, you know, not choosing to match with her and going back to Micah. And Cass actually comes at Nigel for not being an alpha male. And uh, Christine was like, oh, I, I got something for him. Because basically, Christine gets to roasting Kaz and Micah for the ages. Well, um, Christine basically hates the hardest on this couple by saying that the only match for Kaz is the the evil one himself, Saitan, you know, and then um, the other girls that Kaz also toyed around with like uh, Holly and the pink hair girl I don't remember her name they also wrote some too saying he don't know what he want and I do feel like he was basically playing the game and he you know counterattacked all of them by saying yeah everybody here was dating everybody else why am I the only one that's bad for dating other people because to be fair Stefan had <laughs> you know possibly more dates because I believe, wasn't Stefan at first with Xanthi and then they swapped? I, I don't remember. And then he ended up with Alara after the fact. So I feel like he had three different people. So um, Kaz had also two different people, but he did kiss a third person. But again, it's like, this is the nature of the beast. But they was really roasting Kaz. And then um, past all the roasting and right before you know the vote for who won we basically see harry trying to apologize for his behavior before netflix hits us with the missing footages of harry and melinda which corroborates everything melinda had said so it shows harry begging the netflix camera people to not show the kiss so he lied hard so, instead of focusing on, like, the healthiest and possibly, arguably, you know, most adorable couple 
on Perfect Match both seasons, Netflix decides to center <laughs> the drama and like the highlight of you know the the finale roundtable voting scene around Harry's lion community body self and Jessica false self who always talk about how she she want you know the best for herself and her daughter yet she entertains this clear f boy you know it's like I'll never understand why they keep trying to make fetch happen with Jess like nobody can believe that she has all these high standards and wants the best for herself when at the end of the episode you see that she spun the block with Harry she got back together with him when the cameras weren't looking and I know like the paparazzi had caught them vacationing together Netflix says that they broke up eventually after trying out their relationship in the real world but she had no business being with Harry if she was that serious about her daughter and after what she saw with the lies and how she, he disrespected Melinda but that's neither here nor there I was rooting for Stefan and Alara but when the winner announcement comes after all the drama with Harry and ever <laughs> even after you know running down on everybody else guess who won they fixed their mouth to say that with a margin of one, Christine and Nigel were the winners of the perfect match. And I was in between just not believing, scratching my head, trying to figure out how, and cackling. Because at the end of the day, Christine and Nigel are the newest couple with the most clear and salty rebounding activity on the show with Christine having cussed out Kaz the night before and then in front of everybody who just voted she bitterly cussed out Kaz again basically saying that Satan is his best match you know and they still voted for Christine and Nigel but I still cackled because you know, Juneteenth just passed, and we watched a black couple win a free vacation over a <laughs> more deserving couple. So, I guess Netflix is unserious, and the contestants who voted were spiteful and petty. So, again, I cackled, but in trying to figure out how they won, I know them two obviously voted for themselves. I think Dom also voted against Stephen and Alara and voted for Christine and Nigel since he had wanted Alara. So even though he was saying how he wanted to be in the wedding, when Stephen said he could be a flower girl, that comment of making him, you know, a little child girl role and Stephen basically taking a lot from him when he was about to, you know, try to get it back after dumping and dogging Tulu. He had set himself up to try to get Alara, but didn't work. So I think Dom was one of the reasons why Stefan and Alara didn't win. I think Xanthi, she outed herself for being a Stefan hater during, you know, the deliberations, which surprised me because I thought she'd have more smoke for Chris. And, um, yeah, I'm just still scratching my head. I, I don't know how they won. So say how you feel about Perfect Match 2. Obviously, it's unserious. I only watch it if you went for summer fun. And always remember you're the master of your fate and the captain of your soul. Bye.